Hey, it's your girl, Kamala Kay, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five reasons why you may potentially be getting denied by modeling agencies when you apply to them and how to fix those things. Hey, it's your girl, Kamala Kay, and I am back with you again with five tips on why you are potentially not getting signed by the modeling agency of your dreams or just any agency in general. So let's go through these five tips and starting with number one, let's go. So the very first reason why you are potentially not getting an offer by a modeling agency to receive a contract is maybe it's just the agency type that you are submitting to. So for instance, say that you are 5'5", five, five, and you are submitting to an agency such as Wilhelmina or such as Elite. Based on your body type, based on your height, maybe even based on your facial features, an agency like Elite, like Wilhelmina, like Ford, those are considered fashion agencies. So if you are not a model that is considered a fashion model, so for instance, if you are not at least 5'9 for a woman, at least 5'11 for a guy, chances are those types of agencies are not the right fit for you. So what do you do instead? Your best bet if you are someone that is below 5'9 for a woman or below 5'11 for a guy would be to start looking more at boutique agencies, smaller agencies that are not as large and agencies that are known as talent agencies versus the typical huge modeling agencies of the world. And I actually have another video that I created in terms of reaching out to talent agencies and how to go about that process. And I'll link that here somewhere or in the description box for you to go check out that video. So the first one is the type of agency. Maybe if you're a model that's super thin, for example, and you're submitting to certain modeling agencies, if that agency tends to represent curvy models, even though you are gorgeous and maybe a, another agency would love to sign you, if you're submitting to, to an agency that is not looking for your body type, then obviously they're not gonna be responding to you or they're not gonna be offering you a contract if your physical appearance is not what they're looking for. So that's also something to keep in mind in terms of just, yes, you may have the quote unquote model body type, but that may not fit with that specific agency. In that sense as well, sometimes the agency is an agency that doesn't represent your look. So for instance, as a black model, a lot of times when you go on agency websites, for every, 10 Caucasian models, there may be one or two black models. And so the agencies a lot of times don't cater to black models as much as they cater to Caucasian models. So sometimes when they say they already have your look, it just means that they already have someone that somewhat fits your category, even if they don't have that many of those models that fit your category in comparison to another ethnicity. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The second reason why you may be constantly getting rejected by agencies or just not even hearing from them to begin with is a really big one and it really boils down to professionalism. So I know you're thinking, okay, well, I'm always professional. I'm friendly, you know, I, I do all of these things to show that I'm professional, but when it comes to the modeling agency, there are specific things that an agency looks for. And part of the professionalism is also your personality. So let's say that you are someone that is super shy and you go and meet with an agency for what is called their open call. You go and meet with them and they're asking you questions and you're sitting there and you're kind of like meek and you're kind of shy and you know, you're looking around, you're a little bit nervous. When they ask you questions, your voice is not elevated and you just come off as someone that's a little bit apprehensive of the situation. Well, agencies want to know, yes, you don't have to be super bubbly and outgoing and crazy all the time, but they do want to know that you have somewhat of a personality because you are representing them and you are representing their clients. So they want to know when they send you out to meet with a client that you're going to be able to interact with those clients and be able to leave a good impression. Another thing that agencies do not like when it comes to professionalism, say for instance that you, again, attend an agency open call. The agency says that the open call is from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And obviously that is a two hour block when you're able to meet with the agencies. So within that two hour block, let's say that you show up to the open call at 1.50 p.m., 10 minutes before the open call ends. Yes, you are still within the window that the agency is allowing for that open call, but in their minds, if you show up 10 minutes before the open call ends and you had a two hour window, 
Sometimes agencies think that that is a lack of professionalism, that you're not taking this seriously, that you waited till the last minute. And obviously, when it comes to that time frame, they're trying to wrap things up. They're not trying to start a brand new interview again with someone that has just walked in. So keep that in mind as well. Also, if you're someone that someone is always telling you, oh my gosh, you should be a model, you're gorgeous, like all this stuff, and people are just like boosting you up all the time, and then you have like this sense of arrogance around you, even though you may say like, oh, it just shows that I have confidence and all this stuff. Yes, we want you to have confidence, but the agencies do not want someone that's arrogant. The agencies don't want someone that's gonna say, oh, well, you know, everyone always tells me I should be a model, so why aren't you signing me? Keep those things in mind. It may to you, maybe how you interact on a day-to-day -day basis, but you wanna make sure that if you are someone that just comes off as being too much or even too shy, that you wanna make sure that you find the even playing field that's gonna be conducive to what the agency is looking for. All right, that was two for professionalism. Number three, when you are submitting to an agency, majority of the time, they will ask you to submit to them digital pictures or Polaroid pictures. And I also have a, an article on my blog that really goes through all the ins and outs of creating the best digitals and Polaroids or taking the best digitals and Polaroids with your cell phone that you can submit to agencies. So I'll link that as well for you to go check out that blog. But specifically with the digitals, agencies are looking for very specific things on their on the digitals one you have to make sure that your digitals are not blurry at all i see that all the time where the photo quality is just not good and that's not going to impress an agency also the lighting needs to be good when you're taking digitals agencies prefer that you take your digitals against a plain white wall so like a white wall that you see behind me here agencies like that they want where you're facing natural lighting you don't want to be squinting in your pictures from taking the digitals outside in harsh lighting. So blurry pictures, pictures that are not well lit, pictures that are not against a solid background, those are things that they don't like. Also on the agency websites when it comes to taking your digitals and your Polaroids, the agencies are very specific in the angles that they want you to take. So sometimes they ask you typically to do like a headshot, a three quarter body shot, a full body shot, side profile. Some agencies are specific in how they want your hair, like if they want your hair pulled back or if they want your hair straight down. They tell you if they want you in a bathing suit or if they just want you in jeans and tank top. And a lot of times what happens is some people don't read all of the fine print when it comes to the directions of the digitals and Polaroids. And so when you submit those to the agencies, even though if you have potential, if you do not follow their directions, they're not going to be pleased because that just shows them that you are not going to be taking everything else as seriously or as professionally as you should. Okay, that was tip number three. Tip number four of why you're potentially not getting signed or offered a contract by modeling agencies is because, let's face it, you are not the only gorgeous person in the world. I know we all are different and unique in our own ways, but at the end of the day, an agency will have other models or potentially could have other models that fit your similar look or at least your category. Let's say for instance, you are 5'11", you are slender, you have gorgeous blonde hair and blue eyes and everyone tells you that you should be a model, right? Well, maybe when you go to Miami, for example, and you go and go to agency open calls there or you submit to agencies online there, Miami is a market that has tons of blondes, tons of brunettes, that have a similar body type to the 5'11 slender look. So maybe that agency already has someone that fits your general structure, that fits your general look, that has the same exact hair part and curls as you do. And so sometimes it's not necessarily about you because this industry, let's face it, it's a lot of times it's not personal, it's business. And they're gonna be selecting models that they think will work with the clients that they have. So sometimes, yes, you may be great. Maybe you do have the potential to be a model but you're not getting signed and that's because the agency already has someone that fits in your general look it may not be about you it's just what the agency prefers to market to their client last but not least the fifth reason of why you may potentially be getting rejected by agencies or not even getting a response from them is because it's just the wrong season what does that mean 
So in modeling, there is something called a season. So obviously we think of the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. In modeling, there is something called a season. So that means in that specific region, market, location, that agencies have a time frame of the year where things tend to be busier, where their models tend to work more. And so let's say in Miami, for example, in Miami, the season for modeling, where modeling tends to be busier, where there's more clients in town, more jobs happening is around from January to around May or so and then it picks back up in September and so within that time frame when the season is happening agencies have already gathered up most of the models or just about all of the models that they want to represent for that season so say that you're submitting to agencies in Miami season started in January and you're submitting to the agency in February maybe the agency just has a full roster of models already and that just means that you may have the potential to be a model. It just means that in that particular season, the agency already has all of the models that they want to represent. Now, there's always an exception, right? Even if the agency has what is considered a full board for that season, if you walk into the agency or you submit and they're just like, where have you been our lives? Because you are just drop dead gorgeous. Everything that we look for in a model, you're unique, all of this stuff. They'll still sign you if they truly, truly want you. But generally, sometimes the agencies just limit how many models they represent, which is a good thing because when they have a limited amount of models that they represent, it just means that they are able to focus more on their models versus being spread too thin. Those are the five main reasons of why you may potentially be getting rejected by modeling agencies or just not getting a response. And sometimes it really has nothing to do with you. It's just based on those varying things that, that take place. So maybe it's just, okay, maybe you're submitting to an agency that is not the good fit for you. So that just means that you find another agency or another set of agencies to submit to that have a better look for you. That just means that maybe you just need to adjust your attitude or adjust your, if you're someone that's always late and you're meeting with these agencies and you're running behind, make sure that you're getting there in ample time so that they see that you're serious about this industry. Make sure that your digitals are clear that you follow the directions of what the agency is asking for and how you look and that there's good lighting. All of those things are really important for you to increase your chances of getting you agency signed because if your goal is to be agency signed, you obviously have to be very mindful of what the agency is looking for, when they're going to be looking for you and all of these different things. So. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Leave comments below. Leave comments below and let me know if you've submitted to agencies before and what their response was. Did you get signed? Did they even respond? If they responded, what did they say? Did they give you a specific reason of why they didn't sign you? Leave comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. And if you have any specific questions that you want me to answer based on what an agency said to you, feel free to leave those as well. And don't be shy about leaving comments and about being honest about what happened to you and your experience. There's no shame here. You're clearly watching this video because you want to learn. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss any updates. And as always, feel free to contact me on my website if you have any specific questions, comments that you want to know about or things that you want to suggest for me to do videos or blog posts about. So until the next video, I will see you soon and be sure to leave comments and I will get back to you and answer all of them. Have a good one. Bye.